Mike check one two what to do welcome back to the Mike check podcast this is T word the people's champ today we're talking about the Texas Longhorns and the Oklahoma Sooners and their upcoming matchup in the Red River shootout aka the Red River rivalry before we get into the video hit that like button subscribe and when it's over go ahead and drop a comment tell us what you think of the content especially this video that you're listening to right now and make sure you make it to the end so we can have a nice little discussion you know what I mean all right so Red River shootout happening in Dallas, Texas at the Cotton Bowl. This is a annual affair that goes down first, well, actually the second Saturday or second weekend in October between these two bitter rivals who have played each other every year for 118 years in a row. On Saturday, it's going to mark the 119th straight meeting of these teams since 1929. That's a big deal because a lot of rivalries either take some time off because of conference realignment or things like that, or for some reason they just stop playing each other. So in this particular case, these teams, no matter where they've laid in terms of conference, in terms of rankings, they find a way to match up and play each other. So as a Texas Longhorns fan, this is big to me because I feel like this is one of the biggest rivalries in football, and I think it deserves some talking about. Now, there's a few statistics to go along with this in terms of them having like attendance records and one thing i can say about this game is that from the emotional standpoint it has a it has a specific role in this game right now to simple things like if you look at the image that's on the screen right now you'll see that the field is split in half you've got texas on one end oklahoma on the other and you can see right down the middle at the 50 you've got the crimson and white side or crimson and cream whatever bullshit they say and then you've got that burnt orange and white that beautiful burnt orange and white on the other side and it's split half and half that tells you just how big this rivalry is when everything else falls to the side records what's on the line all of that stuff nothing really matters except that these two teams are going to play and we have an intention of beating the other team's ass so that's what I love about this rivalry, and I expect it to be a really big game. Now, last year, Texas did win 49-0, to zero, marking the biggest margin of victory for the Longhorns. Unfortunately, in the series, the biggest margin of victory is owned by Oklahoma, and it was 50-plus points because well, they just beat the shit out of us one year um, back in 2003, and I don't want to talk about it. But... <laughs> um that's what rivalries are when it's your bitter rival you want to beat them as bad as you can and you don't come off the gas you never pump the brakes um i think it's right up there with auburn alabama and the iron bowl you know with georgia and florida the, the world's biggest cocktail party or whatever they call it um up there in the big house and and in the shoe when you look at ohio state and michigan and things like that these rivalries are long-standing ucla usc etc the significance of this rivalry cannot be understated now to get specific to the game that's going to go down on saturday let's talk about the quarterbacks first and specifically i'm going to focus on quinn ewers um he was in the game last year when the longhorns ran up a 49 and victory and he'll be facing a quarterback who missed out on last year's game because he did have a concussion this is also the second year of the brent venables after the sooners went six and seven and the longhorns had a better record now he's got a year under his belt his team is number 12 in the nation, and they're going to face a number three Longhorns team that's got national championship aspirations. I don't think the sky's the limit for the uh, Sooners, but I definitely think the sky's the limit for these ones because they've got everything you need. They've got a great running back in Jonathan Brooks. They've got Dewars. They've got Whittington at receiver. They've got Worthy. They've got a defense of a lot of guys you don't know by name, but as a unit, they work really well together. And when you think about Texas putting up 30 plus points offensively every week this year, that's got to say something for the quality of the team and what Sarkeesian is doing with the offense. Um, that's been a problem for us over the last few years. And all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, over the last few years, he found a way to put all the pieces into place. Now this team can put up points and you've got to play defense and then score in order to beat the Longhorns. And Alabama figured it out pretty quick, went down the stretch. Texas kept putting up points, and Bama's offense just got shut down. Baylor suffered the same fate, Wyoming, etc. So, I feel like Oklahoma's going to be in that same book right now. CBS Sports has them at a five and a half point underdog. I'm putting it at 14. I think the Longhorns are going to win by at least two TDs, and it's not going to be close throughout this game. I think maybe the first five minutes, both teams are going to show that they really want to be there in the excitement of the moment. But once that state fair environment really kicks in, the simmers down. 
you're going to see Texas start to pull away and prove that they are the better, more talented, deeper team. And I think we're going to see a lopsided game. So if you want to see a good game, you need to tune in early. If you want to see something lopsided and just see dudes running up and down the field scoring touchdowns, tune in around the second quarter for Texas to be kicking that ass. You heard? So we'd love to know what you guys think. We'd love to find out what's your favorite rivalry in college football. Do you even care about college football? Drop that down in the comments. This has been T for the Mike Check Podcast. Until the next time, I'm out. Peace.